In today's lesson, we're gonna continue um, discussing percentages. So I wanna look at some common percentages that most of us would know kind of right off the bat. Um, I would call them benchmark percentages. So I think we all know that 50% is equal to a half, right, or 0.5. Okay, so that's one of the most common ones. I think most of us know that 25% is one quarter or 0.25. And then let's talk about some other ones. What about 10%? 10% is one-tenth, right? And it's 0 0.1. I talk about 10% because 10% is easy for us to, um, it's easy for us to uh, find that in our head, right? We just move the decimal place one time, okay? Because we're essentially taking a tenth of it. Sorry, I'm adjusting the focus there. Um, if you discuss 100% of a value, it's equal to the whole number one, okay? Um, or 1.0. And then maybe some that you are um, less familiar with, but that you'll need to kind of get familiar with. 33 and a third percent, that's literally 33 and a third over 100. Um, and that just equals one out of three, okay? Or 0 0.333 with a bar over it. And so two-thirds would be double this number, so you would literally double the whole number portion and the fraction percentage, but 66 and two-thirds, literally percent represents two-thirds, okay? So it would be 0 0.6 repeating, okay? So we'll put the bar over the six. So what I want us to practice, um, a lot of what we teach in elementary school math is teaching them how to do things mentally, um, even a lot of the common core math that gets such a bad rap is really just us trying to get our students to do mental math, to not have to rely so heavily on pen and paper work and definitely not on calculators. So I want to use these benchmark percentages and I want us to try to practice finding some percentages of numbers without a calculator. So let's look at a few examples. So if I told you to find 20% um, of 80. Now, I want you to look at that our common percentages, right? We don't really have one for 20%, but we do have one for 10%. So if you're kind of writing out the thoughts in your head, um, you could find 10% of 80. And the trick to that, remember, is you move the decimal place once. Okay, so 10% of 80 is 8, but notice we want 20%, right? So 20% is double 10%. So 20% of 80 will be twice that, or 16. Notice I leave nothing to the imagination. I'm really kind of explaining out every hot thought I have here. The answer is 16, but it's really more about the mental thought process. That's really what we're covering. <clears throat> So what about this one? What if I told you to find 65% of 90? Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would say, hey, 65%, you know, kind of close to 50%, and I'm feeling like I can do 50% in my head. So first find 50% of 90, which is 45, right, half. Um, then we can find 10%. And again, we find 10% by moving the decimal place one, right? So 10% of 90 is nine. So notice we have 60% accounted for now. Um, and so lastly, we need to find 5%. So just like we talked about 20% being double the 10%, we could say that 5% is half of the 10%, right? So I'm just gonna say we can find it by taking half of 10% of 90, okay? And when we do that, of course, we get, um, we get a decimal, right? So half of nine, because the 10% it represents nine, right? Or nine represents the 10%. So that would be four and a half, okay? So in the end, this is something that I would definitely need to see. We would say that 65% 
of 90 is equal to 50% of 90 plus 10% of 90 plus finally the extra 5%. Okay, so this is 54, right? 45 plus 9, and then plus an extra 4.5 would be 58.5. Okay. So notice every thought, every step is really stated here. All right, so what about this one? Um, find 166 and two-thirds percent of 120. The first thing is anything over 100, you need to address the 100 percent first. Okay, so first we're going to find um, 100 percent of 120. 100% of a number is just itself. And even if you know that, notice we're going to state that anyway. Okay. Um, and then you can go about this two different ways. Um, you can find 33 and a third percent of 120. Okay. Remember, this just means one third of 120. And of course, that would be 40. And so if we're starting from 33 and a third percent, then 66 and two thirds percent would be twice that. So 66, notice every time I say a percentage, I say 66 and two thirds percent of a number. You never have a decimal without a number you're taking that percentage of. Um, so it's gonna be double that. Or equal to 80, okay? So then in the end, 166 and two-thirds percent is equal to um, the 100% of 120, which was itself 120, right, plus the 66 and two-thirds, which was um, 80, for a total of 200. So you can verify these on your calculator, especially since you're at home. Will I really know if you use a calculator for these? Um, definitely not, but on the homework, on the test, I'm going to expect to see these written out thought processes. Okay, So try to focus on that for the homework. It's not just about getting the right answer. Okay, It's not just about content. If this class was just about content, I'm teaching you literally elementary school math. Okay, And that's not the point of this class. The point of this class is to teach you the processes and the thought processes and, um, and strategies for you to teach others elementary math. Okay, so some of us need to kind of remember that as we submit homework. All right, so we're gonna look at two different options, both of which would give us 95% of a number. Okay, so option one, um, and honestly, these two options aren't the only ones. So I could find 50% of 120, which is what? 60, right? Half, okay? 50% of 120 would be 60. Um, and then notice I'm only going to use my benchmark or my common percentages. Um, I could find 10% of 120, which is 12, because we moved the decimal place twice, right? So 40% of 120 would be four times that. So 4 times 12 is 48. Okay, so notice we have taken care of 50% plus an extra 40%. So now we just need to cover the additional 5%. So um, we can find 5% of 120 will be exactly half um, of 10% of 120. So 5% of 120 is half of 12, right? 12 was the 10% that I listed above, so it's going to be 6. <clears throat> so 95, I'm going to put a star here. This is what you would need for sure. 95% of 120 is going to be the 50% quantity plus the 40% quantity plus the 5% quantity for a total of, that'd be 108 plus an extra 6, which would be 114. So here's another alternative though. Okay, if you notice 95% is really close to 100. Okay, so maybe we could figure out 100 and then kind of back off of that by 5%. So another option is for you to use subtraction of some sort. 
So with this train of thought, we would first find 100% of 120, which is 120. Okay, um, and then maybe I should say this here. Um, I want 5% less than that. And I'm gonna underline this because this is different than how we've been doing all the rest of them, right? The rest of them we've been adding percentages together to get our desired percentage. This time I'm gonna subtract. So we don't jump straight to 5%. We mention the common percentage, which is 10% of 120, which again is 12. And so 5% of 120 is half that or equal to 6. So in the end 95 percent of 120 equals 120 minus 6 or 114. Okay. Notice doing it with option two's method does require a little bit less writing, a little bit less thought process. So honestly, option two would probably be maybe one of my more go-to methods there. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna have an opportunity to practice some of these things on the homework this week. Um, so definitely make sure you kind of pay attention to that. All right, so the last thing that we wanna talk about with percentages is something called a personometer. A personometer is simply just a visual way to organize your data. I actually really like to use a personometer when I'm teaching percentages to students that really don't have a whole lot of experience with them. I think it's a really helpful visual tool. And so this is what it looks like. It starts at the top and it literally kind of looks like a measurement gauge, maybe like a thermometer. That's why it's called a personometer. And the percentages go on the left and whatever quantity you're trying to find goes on the right. And we start at zero in both cases. So we start at zero quantity, which is 0%. And then we're gonna go up to 100%, okay? And then there'll probably be a value here, okay? Um, so we can kind of slide up and down. So values that are closer to 0% show up higher than values that are closer to 100%. So here's how you deal with these. You fill in the known amounts. And then we're gonna solve for the unknown quantities using proportions. So the personometer is not like a standalone solving method. It's just really a more of a organizer. But for our more visual students, this will be a really good way for them to keep straight what their data is. Um, so just make sure there are values on both sides and try to make them to scale. In other words, if you're talking about something that's 90%, you should draw that closer to the 100% than you would to the 0%. <clears throat> So um, in the worksheet packets that I asked you to print out, um, find the one that looks like this. Okay, it's actually a two-sided document, but we're gonna look at the first side first. Okay, this is what some examples of some personometers. We're gonna kind of work these through together. Um, all right, so notice here we have the information filled in and then a box for what we don't know. Okay, and that's how we're gonna draw them on our own as well. Um, so let's look at a couple of these. So notice I have zero, 50, 100%, right? And then I have zero. So I know the full quantity is 80. So what would the 50% be? Um, notice these I could probably fill in without having to do a proportion. Okay, we'll do some in a minute where I'm not sure that would really be an option. <clears throat> okay, what about here? Notice here we don't know the full quantity, right? But we do know that 50% of that quantity is 26. So if we double that, we should have 52. Okay. Also notice in both of these cases, the 50 is in the middle, right? It's right in between zero and 100%. Okay. All right, here, now notice if you're looking kind of at this, we know it's gonna be less than half, right? Because it's higher up. Okay, so the question would be like, what portion of 80 is 20? Okay, notice it's one fourth, right? So that would be, 
And then what about this? This is one of our common percentages that we just discussed. 33 and a third percent means a third. So a third of 90 would just be 30. All right, so we're gonna actually look over some of the problems on this worksheet. So I'm gonna move this to the side and we'll just kind of work them off um, on our paper. So um, let's look at the problem on the bottom of that worksheet that I just showed you. So it's the one where you know the person got 70 out of 80 questions right. So I'm gonna rewrite it, but you technically don't have to really write this. You could just kind of solve it on your worksheet if you wanted to. <clears throat> So let's say a student got 70 of 80 problems correct. And the question is, what percentage did he get correct? So we're gonna draw our standard personometer. Percentage always goes on the left. Um, for this problem, rather than saying quantity, I'm going to put actually what the problem is, which is how many problems did they get correct. These should both start at zero, and this should stop at 100. And then you just need to figure out what information you have, right? The student got 70 out of 80 correct, so the out of 80 goes to the 100% side. And then notice 70, I would probably need to mark that pretty close to 80, right? It's a lot closer to 80 than it is to zero. And so our unknown quantity is what goes in the box. Okay, so this is what we don't know. So here's where we can set it up as a proportion. So you literally set up left equals right. So you're gonna say our unknown quantity over 100 equals 70 over 80. Okay, definitely a mistaught um, process is the cross multiply process. Okay, so I don't want you to do it all at once. So the cross multiply, process said this, that we're allowed to do x times 80, which is 80x, when we have a fraction, and we're allowed to set that equal to 100 times 70, which is 7,000. So I'm going to write it out like this first so that we can see. So I've got 80x equals 7,000. And then notice I can divide by 80. So you'll want to have a calculator out here but you'll get an answer of 87.5. And notice my answer is on the percentage side, right? Which means that you would have a percentage there, okay? So I want you to, for example two, I want you to look at the second page of the printout that I gave you. There are parts A through E on it, and I want you to see if you can complete those parts. So after I finish saying what I want you to do, I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. And I want you to use a personometer. In other words, draw a personometer, label it where you think it should go, and then you can set up your proportion from there. Okay, so pause for a bit and see what you get. All right, let's go through these. So what percent of 60 is 51? So my percentometer needs to look like percent. Notice in this problem, I don't really know what the values are. So your general word when you're not sure is just quantity. Both start at zero, end at 100. Okay, so let's read through the problem. What percent of 60? So when it says of 60, that's going to be the full quantity, okay? And we're asking for the percent, right? So 60 is going to go here. 51 is going to be pretty close to 60. In fact, I probably didn't even really make it close enough, to be honest. And so this is where our unknown is going to go, okay? Just kind of like the last one we did. So it's going to be X over 100 equals 51 over 60. Okay, we're going to cross multiply. I just don't want you to cross multiply and divide in one step. So it's 60x equals 5100. And then lastly, we'll divide by 60. The reason I don't want you to cross multiply and divide in one step is because it makes students a little too um, quick with their process, to be honest, and they're not really thinking about what they're doing. And then when they get to junior high and high school, when they start talking about um, rational functions or fractions that have um, X's in them, then they really struggle because they're used to just 
flying through cross multiplication and division. So we want to kind of teach them early that those are separate steps. We cross multiply and then if it makes sense, we divide. Okay, so it just so happens that for these problems, it's going to make sense for us to divide, to divide, I mean. All right, so 35% of what number is 80? So notice this time, the unknown is the total. So I've got my personometer. Notice like my template's always the same, right? It always looks like this, okay? So we don't really know what percentage the percentage is, right? Um, so, um, oh, actually we do know the percentage, sorry about that. So we wanna draw 35%, I was looking at the wrong problem. And then 35% of what number? This is the what number, right? We don't know what that is. And then we're gonna put 80 here. So we get 35 over 100 equals 80 over X. And again, just to, it's just a data organizer, that's all it is. Okay, I just think it's a really helpful one. So you get 35X equals 8,000. And then last but not least, divide both sides by 35. Now this one's not gonna come out all that nice. Okay, it doesn't come out perfectly. So we're gonna say that X is around 228.57. Okay, moving on to C. So part C says 15% um, of 320 is what number? Okay, first thing is notice we're given a percentage in this one, right? We're taking a percentage of 320. So we have percentage and quantity So we know 15 needs to be pretty close to zero there, right? Okay, and notice it says 15% of 320, which means the 320 goes here. So the unknown quantity is what's here. Okay, in other words, what's the 15% number? So it's 15 over 100 equals X over 320. And then we just cross multiply. So um, 100 times X is just 100 X. Notice it doesn't really matter which order I multiply diagonally, okay? Um, if you use your calculator, 15 times 320 is just 4,800. So when you divide by 100, you're just gonna basically drop two of the zeros. So X is gonna be 48. Okay, a couple more. And then we're gonna look at some variations of this. Um, so the problem, on part D says 60 is what percentage of 72? So notice the key phrase here is what percentage, right? In other words, that's the thing we don't know, okay, of 72. So percent, quantity, zero, zero. Okay, I'm not gonna know the percentage, right? The 72 is the of amount, right? The 60 goes here. So what I don't know is what that percentage is. So I'm gonna have X over 100 equals 60 over 72. And then once again, cross multiply. So 72X equals 6,000. So this one is going to reduce to 83 um, with the three repeated, 0.3333 forever. Okay, so that is 83 and a third percent. If you see 0.3 repeated forever, that's a third, okay? And notice I need to end this with percent. So notice on parts A and D, since what I was solving for was the percent itself, then I put a percent in my answer. Okay, so that's kind of important. All right, and then lastly, and then we're gonna look at the second page, um, or the second part of the second page anyway. Um, so 34%, sorry, I can't read. 
Um, 34 is 8% of what number? Okay, so the key phrase here is of what number? Okay, we are unsure what that overall quantity is. So we have percentage, quantity, Okay, so notice it's 8%, so that should be pretty high up, right? And 34 is the 8%, so those are equivalent. What we don't know is what the whole is, what the whole 100% is. So we've got 8 over 100 equals 34 over X. Again, cross multiply, and we get 8X equals 3400. And then divide both sides by 8. So x is going to be 425. So hopefully you can see kind of some value in using this percentometer, okay, especially for our more visual students. So um, what about when the percentages are more than 100? That will happen sometimes. Okay, the answer is we're just going to extend the personometer. So this is where your reading skills are really going to come into play. You're going to find this with your students as well. Sometimes when a student lacks critical reading skills, it actually really harms them in multiple subjects. Okay, so we need to make sure our critical reading skills are there. Um, and we certainly need to foster that in our classroom, too. Um, all right, so let's look at maybe some problems we looked at last time. So I want you to use a personometer to find a 10% salary increase. if the original salary was 28,000. So we kind of did problems like this in the last lecture, but we definitely didn't use a graphic organizer like the personometer, okay? So just to kind of review, remember a 10% increase, okay? We're going to use 110%. Remember, increases we add to 100, decreases we take away from 100, okay? So let's kind of keep that in mind. So we have percent, instead of quantity, we can actually say salary for this problem. So here's 100. So her 100% salary is the 28,000. Notice we want to go further than that though. So we're going to extend the personometer past 100 so that we can cover 110. Notice it's always smallest values on top and biggest values on the bottom. And so now my unknown quantity is there. Okay, and then once I set that up, it's not too bad, right? 100 over 110 equals 28,000 over X. Cross multiply and we get um, 100 X. Use your calculator, but you get kind of a large number there, right? 3 million. 80,000 is technically what that number is. And then we'll just divide by 100. In other words, just drop off two of the decimal places. So X equals 30,800. Okay, so we can kind of combine some of the problems that we did um, last time with this personometer stuff. So let's look at um, maybe a decrease problem. So use a personometer to find the original price of a shirt. I'm sorry, this is not going to be a decrease problem. It's really going to be a problem that's still greater than 100, um, but where we know that quantity that's greater than 100, not the original. So uh, use a personometer to find the original price of a shirt that costs 
2544 after tax of 8.25% has been applied. Okay, so first let's talk about this. So we basically have an 8.25% increase. So remember, this means we're going to use 108.25%. The 100% would be the regular price and then the eight and a quarter additional percentage points. So here we'll have percentage versus price. So we have 100, right? And notice the original price of the shirt is actually what we want. That's actually what we don't know. But we know that if we add a little extra, in other words, if we add 8.25%, we know that the shirt costs $25.54. So in other words, we would expect our answer to be less than $25.54, right? Because we're asking for the price before tax. And this is a problem that students would really struggle with, okay, where I do think that organizing your data is really helpful for them. So if we cross multiply, you're going to get 108.25x equals 2544. And then you're going to divide by 108.25. So use your calculator for sure, right? I don't expect you to do this in your head. So in the end, we're talking about the price of the shirt. Um, it looks like the shirt was 2350. Okay. So if you want to, you could rewatch the video from last time and just kind of practice maybe some of those personometers, okay? Um, but what I want you to do for now is I want you to look at the bottom of this worksheet, okay? Um, these problems right here, I want you to pause the video and see if you can come up with personometers for A through C here. All of these values have um, percentages that are higher than 100%, okay? So pause the video real quick and see what you get for those. All right, so this is part C on the worksheet, part capital C, and then it has A, B, and C, okay? So let's read through that. Hopefully you pause this and kind of try to work it out on your own. So we're comparing percentage to hours worked. Okay, so that's our standard, right? So let's read it. A normal work week is 40 hours, okay? Normal meaning that's the full work week normally, okay? Um, last week, Justin worked 48 hours. What percent of a full week did he work? So he worked an extra eight hours, right? 48. So notice this is the quantity that I don't know. Okay, we would expect this number, hopefully, we would expect for it to be higher than 100, right? Because 100% of his work week was supposed to be 40 hours, and notice he worked more than that, right? So it's definitely going to be more than 100. So we're going to get 40x equals... Um, 4,800, and then we're going to divide both sides by 40. So notice we're solving on the percent side, right? So it's going to be 120%. In other words, he worked his normal work week plus an extra 20%. That's what that stands for. Okay, so let's look at part lowercase b. Last year enrollment at Armstrong College was 5,000. This year it is 5,150. Um, this year's enrollment is what percentage of last year's enrollment? So we have percentage, and this time we have enrollment. Okay, so what they're saying is the full um, or a whole um, enrollment number is 5,000. But this year we inched past that, right? So it's 5150. And the question is, notice if you read that, it says what percent of last year's enrollment? Okay, so now that we have that, we can set that up, right? 100 over X equals 5,000 over 5,150. One more time, cross multiply. So we're going to get 5,000 X equals 515,000. Remember, when you multiply by 100, you just tack on two zeros to the end of whatever number you have. 
and then we'll divide by 5,000. So we're expecting to get something higher than 100%, but if you notice, the enrollment isn't that much more, which tells us that um, it shouldn't be a crazy higher than 100%, just a little bit higher, which is what we get. We get 103%. <clears throat> All right, so last but not least, we have a test score. So it says Mandy's score on a standardized test is 750. This is 150% of the average score. So we need to extend this personometer down to 150. And notice it says this score of 750 is equal to the 150%. So that means this is our unknown quantity. So when we go to set it up, 100 over 150 equals X over 750. So cross multiply and we get 150 X equals 75,000. And then divide both sides by 150. And notice we get 500. It's not percentage in this case, right? It's her score. Okay, it's not her score. It's the average score she's being compared to. So her score is higher, right? Because she represents 150%. So I want you to resist the urge to just pull out your calculator on these percentage problems. And I want you to focus more on how are you going to explain these mentally slash with a picture or something like that. I'm not claiming that we wouldn't use a calculator for this portion. I'm just saying I don't want you to use a calculator exclusively and that's the only thing that you know how to do.